This is New Cap News with Mike Baden. Good evening. Tonight, the border city will be unplugged for the annual Earth Hour. From 8.30 p.m. till 9.30, people are encouraged to conserve energy by unplugging electronics and turning off lights to support solutions on climate change. People are encouraged, like we said, to conserve energy by unplugging electronics and turning off lights, all for a good cause. We're asking people to participate, have a little fun, but more importantly, recognize how dependent we are on energy and why we need to use it wisely. By participating in Earth Hour, Lloyd Minster is joining over 5,200 cities and millions of people across the world in this symbolic demonstration to try to inspire people to regularly conserve energy and not take it for granted. Just recognize for that hour what it would be like if we happen to use our energy in a poor way where we can't always have it there when we flick the switch. The city will not be turning off everything because of safety issues, so things like traffic and street lights will remain on. Details on the federal budget were released this week, and Mayor Jeff Mulligan shared with us where the extra revenue will be going and what this means for the border city. You know, infrastructure, 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 housing, housing, housing. Those are really focuses with our provincial money. It's no secret that Lloyd Minster is growing faster than the construction can keep up. With the extra revenue, this city can now make plans for quicker expansion. Saskatchewan's newfound growth and success has created a real demand on housing. We've got to get people out of entry-level housing or rentals into ownership. Right now, we have a real problem right at that entry-level rental. This will allow many more homes to be built in our city uh, from a rental perspective, and that's going to ease that burden. Mayor Mulligan estimates that the infrastructure and housing crunch could see relief by next spring. The Vermilion Dance Festival is in full swing with performances happening throughout the weekend. An opportunity for young dancers to showcase their talent and be judged by professionals to improve their craft. Elise Cox has more. Dancers were busy rehearsing before they hit the stage at the 22nd annual Vermilion Dance Festival. This year we're doing Burning Love. It's a little bit more advanced tap than most of us have done. But taking on challenges is nothing new for these dancers who work hard to contribute to an awesome festival. We don't dance any competitions, we dance festivals, so they dance to have fun. But the dancers get a lot more out of it than just a recreational activity. It gives me a chance to get out of the house and it's fun just hanging with my friends and dancing with them. It's fun, you get to be with your friends and you get to dress up in goofy costumes and it doesn't matter if you're not yourself. So while they're having fun becoming characters in their dance, they're trying to impress an important guest, an adjudicator from New York. She's been adjudicating for 20 years in the States and in Canada, a little bit more in this, this is the first time out west. She's been to Vancouver, but never in Alberta. She's been so great with the girls, giving constructive criticism, but is also, you know, singing their praises. And yeah, we're really lucky to have her here this year. And the festival is bigger than ever with 400 dance entries from over 10 different dance schools in Alberta and Saskatchewan. We have tap, we have ballet, we have lyrical, we have everything. It's a great atmosphere. The girls always have a lot of fun. It's a very positive atmosphere. They learn lots from the adjudicator. And yeah, it's just a really well-run festival. The festival is Vermilion Dance Association's fundraising event for the year and where dancers are awarded scholarships for their hard work. Elise Cox, Newcap News. The Lloydminster Girl Guides held their 72nd annual tea, craft and bake sale today at St. John's Church. Parents and kids pack the church to buy goodies, chat with other members and promote the Girl Guides. And so far, it's been a successful year. We have 93 uh, Girl Guide members, plus about 20, you know, 25 adults. So uh, we're very uh, uh, excited about that because we were up 20 girls from last year. Rosemary says that anyone thinking about joining but is too shy, that it's worth I just taking really think the risk. Very important for girls to join because uh, they do learn a lot of things, leadership skills, uh, learning how to do program work, community work, self-help work. The guides will also be hosting its 40th annual Wood Smoke Area event on June 9th at Bud Miller Park. Elise now joins us on the desk for weather and after the big snowfall, it's looking a little more like spring out there. 
Yeah, today was definitely a beautiful day outside, but kind of some bad news to give you. We are expecting a little bit of rain or snow tomorrow, so kind of a yes. bit of a damper yeah, on that spring bit. weather. But right now in Lloydminster, we are sitting at 11 degrees, so beautiful outside with some light winds coming in at 11 kilometers per hour. And around the region right now, Lakeland's also sitting at 11 degrees and the Battle Fords sunny and 13 degrees. I'll have your full weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. Emmett joins us for our first look at sports, and Emmett, the snow is gone, sun's out, but hockey's still around. Yeah, we've got the senior Triple A's coming to the border city in a few weeks' time, and right now in Vermilion, the senior Double A A men's hockey championships are underway. The hockey season may be nearing its finish, but there is still a lot to play for, especially for the Dewberry Mustangs. Yesterday kicked off the opening day of the senior men's Double A and A provincials in Vermilion, and last night the Mustangs began their chase for a provincial title as they took on the Grand Prairie Athletics. Early in the first, Dewberry's Lee Popeskull comes out from the corner and stuffs it past goaltender Dave Larson. Mustangs up one zip, starting off strong with the home crowd behind them. Grand Prairie would answer back as Dustin Oakford threads the needle to Dean Watson. It's all square at once, couple of unlikely players producing. That's Watson's first point all season. Dewberry looking to regain the lead as Tyson Knight is sent on a breakaway in on a one-on-one -on -one dance with Dave Larson, who holds his ground. In the dying seconds of the first, 2-1 Mustangs and big chance Benz Miller spots Shane Cusack, who goes five-hole and is 3-1 Mustangs after one period of play. But Grand Prairie responds early in the second and in a big way. First, it's Brock Clement cleaning up the garbage, then Jake Goldsmith will even the score just two minutes later. And just like that, it's knotted at three. The team's headed to the dressing rooms that way. Then in the third, Logan Good Swimmer shows he's a good shooter too. He breaks the deadlock by going top shelf, short side, 4-3 GP. The Athletics would go on to score two more as Dewberry drops their first game of the tournament, letting in five unanswered goals to lose 6-3 controlled it in the first period and, and looked really well and in the second period they just everybody fell asleep and uh, you know give them two easy goals un, uncalled for and uh, I mean you know then you start you know it's a downer so and then come back out in the third period and the boys they played better but still didn't play with it the way they should have. That second period really killed us. The third period I thought we know was strong we, we were in there and most of the time uh, it's just you know especially just like Buddy said you know three periods of hockey you'll win you a game in this tournament you take 20 minutes off and it'll bite you and it did tonight. One team has already been decided in the AJHL Finals as the Brooks Bandits continued their domination of the South, sweeping their division final series. The North Division has been as close a match as most expected. Heading into Friday, the home team had won each game with no game decided by more than two goals. So, on Friday, with what had become a best-of-three series, the teams headed to Spruce Grove for the crucial Game 5. Second period, Fort McMurray Oil Barons already up 2-0. Matt Spacek puts one on net from the point. Marcus Gerbrandt gets his twig on it. Shots equal at this point, but the Barons comfortably ahead on the scoreboard. Just over a minute later, Saints working the puck in the offensive zone, and Matthew Benning races in from the blue line to the blue paint. Steamrolling goaltender Brody Hoffman for the Saints' first goal. Love the Barons' support of their tender on that play. Before the period's out, Brody Hoffman gets hung out to dry again as Nicholas Bourgeois gets two cracks at it in front of the net. The Saints send the game to overtime, but Harrison Hendricks scored on the first shot in the extra frame. We felt it wasn't important enough to show you in this package. Barons can win the series at home tomorrow night. It's well known that last year the Lloyd Minster Bobcats nearly packed up and moved to White Court. While that didn't happen, it appears White Court may be getting an AJHL team next season. St. Albert is on the verge of losing its second AJHL team in the past decade. Previously, the Saints shipped up and went to Spruce Grove. Now the Steel's ownership wants to relocate to White Court. You know, if the team relocates, it's a disappointment for the community. Uh, that being said, the, uh, uh, for whatever reason, the, uh, the fans uh, weren't, in the, weren't in the stands. Season ticket sales have dropped from 454 five years ago to just 75 this season as the team finished with the league's worst record. Junior A hockey uh, in and around our big cities is uh, not always an easy sell. So as president of the league, I have to respect uh, any time one of our members uh, certainly comes to the table and says perhaps that their economic situation and relationships aren't working. 
A meeting between the city and team is scheduled for Friday. Canada's national sport is back in the border city. The Lloyd Minster Brutes Pee Wee lacrosse team has begun practicing and the boys are ready to build on last year's success. The Brutes surprised even themselves by winning the 2011 league title. We had most first years and first practice we, out, we went out there, we're like, oh crap, like, there's too many bad, unexperienced people out there. Despite the inexperience, the boys clicked early and rode their success to provincials. Last year, our strength was probably offense. We got a lot of goals and didn't get a lot scored on us. While this year's roster is still being decided, the veterans are expecting similar growing pains, but similar results. This year we got a whole bunch of first years, just like last year. I see this team doing a lot of great things, winning the league hopefully, and accomplishing a lot of goals. League games start Monday, April 16th. And that's your first look at Newcap Sports. Stay tuned for more news and weather after the break. The 2011-2012 hockey season has wrapped up in the border city. The Lloyd Minster Minor Hockey Association is happy with another year of not only record participation, but their greatest team performances in its history. After eight months of hockey, the LMHA wrapped up its season in style. The Pee Wee AA Blazers won the final game in the entire LMHA season, securing the Center 4 Hockey League title. For Blazers head coach Kyle Tapp, it was evidence of the momentum the organization has. Uh, Lloyd hockey, you know, right from all the way up to the junior A team, AAA Bantam, AAA Midgets in absolutely phenomenal hands. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see five or six of these guys playing on CBC one day. Oh, absolutely. When I started on, on minor hockey, we had no elite level hockey. Today we have five elite teams that, at the male and female level. And the competitive teams perform better than they ever have. Seven teams from Adam to Midget qualified for provincials. The major Bantam AA team nearly brought a banner back to the border city, losing in the finals in overtime. Wagner expects things to get even better and soon. Seven, eight years ago, we had just you know, around 500 kids. We're at 930 for this year and anticipating and projecting about a 5% growth for the upcoming season. So, I mean, hockey is alive and well in, in Lloydminster and growing. Spring camps open this weekend at the Service Sports Center. The organization is six weeks from opening online registration. The Lloydminster Red Dogs are back, preparing for the 2012 football season. The team has lost just one game the past two years, and despite big changes to the roster, the Dogs still have their swagger. For me, I see the team heading to victory. Uh, we've been putting in a lot of hours, working very hard. And uh, I expect nothing less than absolute victory this year. We'll do well. I mean, I don't know if we'll go undefeated or if we'll go 6-1, and one, but I mean, I think we'll win more than we lose for sure anyway. The Red Dogs have become one of the powerhouses of the Capital District Minor Football Association. Last year, the team outscored opponents by an average of 19 points, losing just one game. Well, last year we scored a lot of points and everyone knew that we were a threat to score every time we touched the ball. But this year, there are just 12 returning seniors. And as a result, the strategy has changed. It's going to be more on the defensive side. You're going to see our defense. I mean, I think they're going to step up and be really tough to move the ball against. The Red Dogs believe they still have the individual stars in offense that can mentor the younger players and quickly get the offense in sync. We have Bray Josu, Donovan Granham, Jordan McCormick in the backfield. So, and at quarterback, obviously we have Colton Hippie, who's probably one of the best high school quarterbacks in the province. So. Uh, we just got to find a couple receivers to get the ball to them, but it might take a couple games to get the passing game going. Yeah, we have a lot of potential on this team. All, we have a bunch of new players that are all grade 9. Once we build them into the team and get them a better understanding of the game, we should be doing pretty good. And that's it for sports. Stay tuned after the break for more news and weather.
makeup provided by Vivid Hair and Aesthetics.